Hey, welcome to part two of this lesson. Uh, if you haven't looked at part one yet, I would suggest you to look at part one first. Um, that was on strong acid on strong base titration. Um, this one, we're going to change the strong acid to weak acid. So as you can see, I change hydrochloric acid to hydrofluoric acid. Well, how would that be different? Okay. Well, the biggest difference here is pretty big difference is that HF do not dissociate completely. When you put HF in water, it might just stay HF. Okay? It might not even give you an H. It might give you a little bit of an H. But because it is titrated with NaOH, NaOH will actually force HF to separate due to Le Chatelier principle. Now, uh, let's look at um, this question right here, where I have 0.3 molar of HF at 220 milliliters, okay? Titrating, of course, against 0.3 molar of NaOH, okay, in, uh, as a titrant. So, the first thing that we're going to do is to find out what is the equivalent point so we know exactly when to expect the end point to be. Okay, like I said before, even though this is a weak acid, when you're titrating it with a strong base, the strong base, the strong base will cause HF to dissociate. So the way that HF will react with NaOH is exactly the same as any other strong acid. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so let's go with red. Okay, number one, of course, find the equivalent point or the equivalent volume. Let's call it volume. Okay, find the equivalent volume. To do this, of course, we take 0.3 moles per liter of HF, and we have 0 0.02 liters of it. That will give you the mole of HF. Since, again, the ratio is 1 to 1, that's great and all. Of course, that's 1 mole of HF yields 1 mole of NaOH. Okay. Uh, Putting that together, you're going to get 0 0.006 mole of NaOH. Okay. So with 0 0.3 molar of HF and 0 0.02 liters of it, um, you're going to yield 0 0.006 mole of NaOH. Now, obviously, we want uh, the volume of NaOH, and we do have the concentration. So put that in into our concentration formula. Volume is equal to 0 0.006 mole divided by 0 0.3 moles per liter. And the volume that you're expecting the end point to be is going to be 20 uh, milliliter. Okay, so 0 0.02 liter, which is not surprising. Not surprising at all. Okay, because this is 1 to 1, this is 0.3, this is 0.3, and it only makes sense that the number of moles here equal the number of moles here. So this volume has to be the same as that one. Okay, so not surprising. So let's write that down for now. Okay, that the equivalent point is going to be 0 0.02 liters. Okay, now does that mean at 0 0.02 liter, you're going to get a pH of 7 again? Hmm, that's... you'll be surprised. Okay, you'll be surprised. Alright, so after finding the equivalent point, let's start with the pH. So let's go. Number two. So I want to know what is the pH of the, uh, of the solution? Okay, in this case, there's really no solution because we're not going to add anything. Zero milliliter of NaOH added. 
we're not going to add anything. Okay, so if you come over to this picture, that's exactly what we're trying to say. We're not going to add any NaOH. What's inside the flask is just HF. And you notice I did not dissociate HNF. That's because HNF might not be that dissociable because this is a weak acid. I'm going to leave them as HF. Okay, now, what is the pH of this right now if these HF are not so dissociable? Now, not so dissociable doesn't mean that it doesn't dissociate. It does, but very little of it. Maybe out of a hundred of these things, maybe only one of them would dissociate, right? Do you remember how to find pH of a weak acid? If you don't remember, this is probably a, a good, you know, way to take out that memory. But before you do so, you need to understand that it is a weak acid. Because it is a weak acid, there has to be some sort of equilibrium constant. That's right. HF has a Ka of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of negative 4 as a equilibrium constant. You can even look at it as a, as a dissociation value. Okay? It's a dissociation value. Now... Let's do this. Let's see if you remember. So you have HF. HF, because it's a weak acid, is going to have the double arrow, and that will dissociate to give you H plus and F minus. Okay? We are going to need a nice table for this. So we're started out with 0 0.3 molar of HF. We don't have any H, we don't have any F, and of course, this is just going to get lower because dissociation will happen. It will happen very slowly and very little, and this, this is exactly what you're going to get at equilibrium. So, knowing that the equilibrium expression, Ka, is equal to the amount of H plus times the amount of F minus over the concentration of HF. Okay, so let, let's plug in those numbers and solve for X pretty much because X is exactly what we want. We want how many H plus is in the solution. Okay, at 0.3 molar, how many H plus are we going to get? All right, let's go. So 6, oh, let me get back here, 6 0.6 times 10 to the power of negative 4 is equal to x times x over 0 0.3 minus x. Oh no, quadratic equation? Nope, no quadratic equation because if you were to apply uh, the 100 rule, you'll notice that 0 0.3 minus x is very close to 0 0.3 due to the fact that x is a very, very tiny number. Okay, I'm pretty sure you guys can do the 100 rule to check on your own. And uh, knowing that, things is going to be a little easier because if you were to take away this, all you have to do is take Ka, multiply by 0.3, and root that. Um, you should get 0 0.0141. Okay, so 0 0.0141 is the concentration of H. Why is that important? Hey, because that's exactly how you find pH. So negative log of 0 0.0141 is going to give you, let me punch that into my calculator, 1.85. Okay, so when no base was added, 0.3 molar of HF has a pH of 1.85. That's exactly what we expected. Um, Due to the fact that this is a weak acid, no complete association, so therefore 1.85 is totally good. Hey, let's graph this. So at no pH, it was 1.85. Oh, look. For some reason, I already have a dot here. Huh? That's, that's neat. Okay, so 1.85. All right, let's add some base. Let's clear this off. And let's add some base. This is where 
your knowledge has to be exercised. So let's take a look at this graph right here. So I'm going to drop some NaOH in here. I'm going to drop some of these things. I'm going to draw one of these things. Now, oh, before I begin, let me just tell you exactly how much. I'm going to add 5 milliliter of NaOH, okay? A very tiny amount. The uh, equivalent point is 20, so this is just one quarter of the amount. So NaOH is dropped into my solution. So let's take a look at this here. Now, we all know that NaOH is a strong base. So like what strong base will do? Strong base will dissociate. It's dissociate into Na+, plus, and it will dissociate into OH-. minus. Like that. Now, this is the cool part. OH minus will actually react very quickly. Let me, let me use another color. Will react very quickly with HF. It will grab an HF and say, hey, HF, dissociate and give me H plus and F minus. Okay? And once it does, H2O will form, okay? And F minus will form. Okay? So, so far, what we know is that this HF is gone. Along with OH, and this OH will be gone. So, OH and HF will be gone, and they would become H2O and F minus. Okay? That's exactly what's going to happen. Now, knowing that, this flask, let's write this down. This flask has HF in it, F minus in it, um, and what am I writing here? And uh, H2O. Okay. That's what it has. Now, oh, and a, NA, and NA, NA plus. Okay. Now, I can tell you right now that this and this don't play a role in terms of calculating pH, at least not yet. Okay, especially Na actually, especially Na plus. Na plus is not going to play a role in determining pH. Water will, in this case, won't be. Okay, so in this case, most, the determined pH is solely on HF and F minus. Okay, these two will determine the amount of H plus that this flask will, I guess, have, okay? So, let's move on and see how this will work. First of all, with five milliliter of NaOH added, I want to know exactly what's the volume of this, okay? I mean, sorry, not the volume of this, but what's the mole of this? So, 0 0.03 moles per liter of NaOH. How many mole is that? Well, if I multiply this by 0 0.005 liter, okay, I will ex find out exactly what's the mole of that. But I'm not really interested in terms of how many moles of this. I'm more interested in with 5 milliliter at 0 0.3 molar, how much of this is going to get reacted? So what I'm looking for is when I drop my NaOH, how much of these HF will be reacted? As you can see in my drawing, I just show that one of these will be reacted. But in reality, of course, how many moles of this will be reacted? Okay. Well, what, what I should do right here is to indicate the amount of mole here too. Okay. The amount of mole here is 0 0.006. Hopefully you know how I got that. All I did was multiply this by this to find out exactly how many mole of HF are there in this beaker. And that's 0 0.006. 
So with this volume and this concentration, how much of this is going to be reacted? Now, that's not hard to do because it seems like we, we've done this before on part one of this video. Thank goodness that HF and NaOH is one to one because for every HF, it reacts with every mole of NaOH. So mole and mole cancel, NaOH and NaOH cancel, and you are going to be left with how much mole of HF was reacted. And the answer is 0 0.0015. And this is reacted. Okay. So out of 0 0.006 mole of HF, this amount was used to create H2O and F minus. Simple, right? Now, before um, we begin the process of finding pH, I need to know two information. One information is that I need to know what is the unreacted HF and eventually what's the concentration of that. Okay, now we've seen how this is done. All we need to do is take the original amount, which is 0 0.006 mole, and you're going to subtract that by whatever that was reacted, so 0 0.0015 mole, and that will give me 0. 0045 mole. Hopefully my subtraction was right. Okay. Now I want to find out what the concentration is. Okay, so the concentration of HF here, okay, that is left is 0 0.0045 mole over the original volume of the acid plus the added volume of the base. And that should give me, my mental math says, 0 0.18. Okay. That's an important concept. You need to this number, okay, because this is the number that you're going to use to find out the pH later on. Now, that's not the only number that you need. Remember what I said. In the speaker, there are these four players. This one and this one don't play a role in determining pH, but these two does. We found out what this is. Now we need to find out what this is. Now, it's very simple. If you think about it, when we drop NaOH in there, okay, NaOH will react with HF to make F minus. So whatever of this was reacted, you're gonna make one F minus because the ratio of H and F in HF is one to one. So every one of these that was made you will get every one of these. So let me say that again. Every one of these that was reacted will make one of these. So what is H what is F minus? F minus is really reacted HF. Okay. F minus is really the reacted HF. And the reacted HF was calculated right here when we did our stoichiometry. 0 0.0015 mole. Okay. Is our reacted HF because the amount of HF and the amount of F minus is the same. So if you want to find what the F minus is, look at how much HF was reacted or how much of the weak acid was reacted. Okay, now we're going to find concentration of F minus. So that will be 0 0.0015 mole. And you're going to divide that by 0 0.02 liters plus the 0 0.005 liter that was added. And that will give me 
a concentration of 0 0.06 molar. All right? Basically, this number and this number is the key to find pH. Now we're ready to find pH. It seems like there's a lot of work, is it? Isn't it? It is. Okay. Weak acid and strong base is not as straightforward. So, hey, let's find pH now. I think now we have the all the necessary information. We figure out exactly every player that was in here. So now we're ready to do this. HF, H plus, plus F minus, and a nice table. Okay. So initially we have 0 0.18 molar of HF. How do we know that? We, we calculated that because we know how much was reacted and we subtract that by how much was there originally. And then once we got them all, we divide that by the total volume to come up with 0 0.18. So that's how much, uh, what well, does the concentration of HF? Okay, it was 0.3. After adding this, now it drops to 0.18. Makes perfect sense. Uh, H is zero. Ah, guys, F is not zero, okay? F is not zero because if you look at this right here, there are some Fs and we calculated that and we said that the amount of HF equals the amount of F. That's the amount of F in concentration, okay, after dividing it by the total volume. So that's 0 0.06 molar, right? Okay, so you're just going to get less and less of this, okay, because you can see the fact that uh, some of these guys may be dissociating because there is a dissociation constant. Uh, you're going to get more and more of this guy, and hopefully that's true because or else we can't find pH. And, and, oh, oh what am I doing? And you're going to get more of these guys too because whenever HF dissociate, you're going to get H, you're going to get F, so you're going to get more of these and less of these. All right, at equilibrium, you're looking at 0.18 minus X. At equilibrium, H is X. That's exactly what we want to find out. And at equilibrium, it will be 0 0.06 plus X. Okay. Hey, now we're ready to put that into our equilibrium expression. So you're looking at 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of negative 4. That will equal to... Wow, what a mess. X times 0 0.06 plus X over 0 0.18 minus X. Wow, if you were to do this, there's going to be a lot of math. Since there's a lot of math, there will be a lot of mistake or potential mistakes that you can make. Now the question is, will a 100 rule apply? Of course 100 rule apply. Oh, 100 rules can always apply. Does it work? Well, I checked and it does. Thank goodness. So you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about this because X is a very tiny number. Now this is easy to work with. So you're basically taking this number times this then divide it by this and you'll get X. Okay, uh, let me do that for you. I have a calculator right here. X is going to be... Which is going to be 0 0.00198. Oh, I hope I'm right. Okay. All right. So you're going to negative log this. 0 0.00198. And my calculator say 2.7. So after adding 5 milliliters of NaOH, your uh, pH went up to 2.7. Went up. Makes sense. Let's graph this. So at 5 milliliter, it went to 2.7. So at 5 milliliter, you're looking at 2.0. Oh. 2.7 so right there okay so it went up just as we predicted 
All right. Hopefully you understand this. If you understand this, uh, maybe I can get you guys to do the next one, maybe. Okay. We can try. Let me just erase a whole bunch of things here. You know what? I'm just going to erase everything. I will rewrite everything again. No big deal. Okay. I will rewrite everything again. Because the next part, I'm just going to keep it identical. Just changing the volume of base added. Okay, because we're not going to go over equivalent point. We're going to stay before equivalent point. Uh, just that I might want to give you guys a little bit more practice. Okay, so how about 15 milliliter of NaOH added? Okay, 15 milliliter of NaOH added. So let me give you go back to this little diagram right here. So let's say uh, I put two of these now. So if there's two of these... That means uh, there's going to be another Na. That means there's going to be another OH. Okay. So that also mean. There's my green. That there's going to be. Another one of these. Becoming H2O. And F minus. Okay. Looks like there's less HF in this beaker now, and that makes perfect sense because we added more NaOH. The idea is still the same, okay? You, your beaker, your flask is still consisting of HF. There's still HF there. You're going to have more F now. You're going to have more water now, and you have more Na now. But remember, these guys don't play a role. Only this and this gets to speak when you're calculating pH. So, 15 milliliters of NaOH added. Let's go, try it. Pause this video. All right, after I'm pausing, obviously I'm gonna show you how this is gonna be done, right? I'm not gonna leave you hanging here. So, again, we're gonna find out how much Na, how much HF got reacted. So I'm going to take 0 0.3 and I'm going to multiply it by 15 milliliter. Okay. And I'm going to find out exactly how much HF was reacted using stoichiometry. And my answer is 0 0.0045 mole of HF. That's going to get reacted. Okay. So you can even think about this. You can, you can do this. You, you can find out what F is now. Okay. Because we know that F is the same mole as HF. Okay. Because if you think about all the HF that got reacted, all the HF that got reacted, they both form the same amount of F. Because H and F is 1 to 1. So um, it's going to mess up the order a little bit that F is equal to 0 0.0045 mole. Okay. And the concentration of F minus is going to be 0 0.0045 mole divided by uh, the initial volume, which is 0 0.02 liters plus 0 0.015 liters, which is the newly added volume. So uh, this will give me a concentration of 0 0.129 molar. Okay, you know for a fact that that number matters. Now I want to know what is the Reacted, so unreacted HF. Okay, unreacted HF is basically whatever that was originally minus what was reacted and that is 0 0.00. .00 one five. 
Okay. Yeah. And uh, the concentration of HF is going to be 0 0.0015 divided by the original volume plus the added volume. Right? And the concentration is 0 0.043. Right. So far, so good, right? I hope so. All right, now, your favorite part, creating the ice table. So this is this association. So in your ice table, initially, of course, you have 0 0.043 HF. You don't have any H yet. And you have 0 0.129 molar of F. As you can see, you have more F right now than HF. Even the diagram kind of agree with me. And the diagram was drawn by Fluke, too. All right, 0 0.043 minus X. This is going to be X, and this is 0 0.129 plus X. Okay. Uh, I checked 100 rule. It applies. As in, it works. So that's 6 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of negative 4 is equal to x times 0 0.129 plus x over 0 0.043 minus x. These can go. And x is actually equal to a very, very tiny number. 0 0.00022 molarity. Okay. So to finish this off, pH is equal to negative log of 0 0.00022, and that should give me a pH of 3.66. Again, pH increased, which it should be. All right, so. At 15 milliliters, so what you're looking at here is going to be 3.66. So 3, 3.66, right there. Right there. Okay. All right. It went up just as we expected. And uh, I can tell you right now, as we get closer to closer and closer to the equivalent point, it's just going to keep going up and up and up. So let's move on. Let's go equivalent point. So let's erase all of this. And let's go equivalent point. You'll be surprised here. Try not to erase all the other things because I don't want to write them back. All right. Uh, let's go back to this picture. Love this picture. So I'm going to change this to three. <sighs> just gonna, let's not be so lazy. Change this to three. Okay. So I'm going to add another NA. I'm going to add another OH. And guess what? This and this will come together to make H2O and F minus. Okay. Now, come to think of it, there's actually no more H plus here. Let's erase all these H, I mean H plus. Let's erase all these HFs. Let's erase all these OH. Okay, let's erase that arrow too. I think I erased one thing too many. I think I erased an H2O here that I shouldn't. Okay. There you go. Okay. Take a look at my beaker right now. I have no more uh, HF. All the HF has gone on 
to become H2O and F minus. I remember I have three HF to start with. So it makes sense. I have three of these H2O and F minus. I still have three of these Na plus that's really doing nothing. Right? So what's the pH? Now, you may think it's gonna be seven. Just like when we saw with strong acid and strong base. It's gonna be seven. You'll be surprised. All right, so at equivalent point, I'm gonna have zero point, oh well, I was doing a milliliter, liter, so 20 milliliter of NaOH added, okay? So at 20 milliliters of NaOH added, this is when I have equivalent point. This is gonna be the point where all the HF got reacted and the thing is, I asked you, what do you think the pH is? I probably think it's 7 because a strong acid for a strong base, it was. But I can tell you right now, it's not. And here's the chemistry behind it. Okay, it has something to do with this little fella right here. F minus. Now, F minus, unlike Cl minus, which is not a conjugate base. Okay, do you remember back in, I don't know, December, I gave you a list of acids. Okay, it could, have been, it could even be February. I gave you a list of acids, and I said, here's some acids. Hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, chloric acid, and I said, these acids are all strong. Everybody else who are, are weak, everybody else will have a Ka. Do you remember me saying that? Because that's exactly what I'm trying to get back to. HF is not part of the strong acid. We know that already. We've been doing three examples. It's part of the weak acid. Because it's part of the weak acid, it's conjugate base, which is H, which is F minus. Uh, can react with water. That's right. This guy right here can actually react with this guy. Okay, or the water in the solution. Who knows? So F and H2O can actually say, hey, hey, I'm a conjugate base. I don't see acid anymore. All the acids are gone. We are at equivalent point. This solution right here is not going to be 7 because if I were to react with you and we were to create products, one of those products is OH-. Hey, guess what? H2O and F plus will create a basic environment for this solution. Pretty sick, huh? So it's not 7. In strong acid and strong base, Cl minus was in here. Cl minus is not a conjugate uh, base because Cl minus cannot go backwards because it's not under equilibrium. So Cl minus cannot react with water to create OH. So therefore, this is going to be 7. But not F. No, 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 no. F says, I am a conjugate base of HF. Guess what? Water, you are going to react with me. We're going to create some basic environment, dudes. So, let's take a look at how we're going to do this. Okay. And the idea is actually quite simple. Okay, so at equivalent point, we're going to find out exactly how much F- minus there is in here. Okay, we know all the HF is reacted. I want to know how many of these things are there. And if you remember correctly, we actually said that all the H all the HFs makes F minus. Okay, so F minus is the amount of HF. 
which is 0 0.006. Okay, all of this was reacted. See, no HF. So this is what F is because they all went on to become Fs. So let's take a look at the new concentration now. So concentration will be 0 0.006 mole over volume. The volume will be total volume. So that will be 0 0.02 liters. Okay, the original volume of the acid plus 0 0.02 liter, which is the added volume of the base. Okay, my speedy math tells me this is going to be 0 0.15 molar. Okay, so that's the concentration of F minus. Now, why is that important? Remember what we said? F minus can react with H2O. Okay, unlike Cl minus. This creates HF. So I can make HF back plus OH minus. And this is that basic entity. Okay, we need a nice table. Because initially we have 0.15 of this as we calculated. Water is never, ever, ever part of the ice table calculation. We know that already. And we start out with none of these, none of these. And we know that, oh, F minus is going to go down in concentration because uh, this is going to react. So less F minus is going to happen, which means HF is going to be created. OH minus is going to be created. So at equilibrium, that is what we're looking at. All right. So we can make our Ka expression now. Wait a minute. What Ka expression? There's no Ka expression. Why wouldn't there be Ka expression? It's because there's no H's that you need to calculate. Do you see any H's here? That's not an H, that's not an H, that's not an H, that's not an H. Oh, but there is OH. OH is a representation of a base. So we are not going to use Ka. This is There's no Ka expression. But what there is is a Kb expression. Remember KB? Do you remember how to find KB given KA? That's right. KW is equal to KA times KB. That means KB is equal to KW over KA. KW is a constant. It is 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 14. And divide that, of course, by 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of negative 4. KB is 1.52. Oh, let's just put that back. Sorry about that. 1.52 times 10 to the power of negative 11. That is KB. In most CRC handbook, you're never going to get KB. Usually they give you KA. Okay. If you need to find KB of that that acid or that conjugate base of that acid you need to do the uh, the calculation yourself and you know the crc handbook is betting on the fact that if you know how to read the crc handbook you know how to make that conversion all right so let's put this together okay so 1.52 times 10 to the power of negative 11 is equal to x times x divided by 0 0.15 minus x. Again, I already took the liberty to check 100 rule for you, and yes, it works. So x is equal to 1.51 times 10 to the power of negative 6, which is the concentration of OH. Yes, this is the concentration of OH to calculate pH I better see 14 minus negative log. I'm sure you know that already. Nope, oh, not enough space, but you know what I was going to write, right? And uh, that would be 8.18. Okay, makes perfect sense. 
it is a basic environment. Okay, and that's a basic pH. So, don't tell me that you're going to say this is 7 anymore. Okay, and this actually leads to my next lesson tomorrow by looking at a uh, pH of some salts. So, yeah, some salt actually are not neutral. And we're going to see what the pH is. And this actually is kind of related to that. So, yep, don't tell me this is 7. Okay, you get to look at the fact that, oh, F minus is a conjugate base of an acid, HF. So, therefore, it will have the ability to react with water to create a basic environment. Let's graph. 8.18, right? So, a 20, 8.18, so that's right here. Okay, all right, last part, uh, part E, let's erase all of this because we don't need this. This one is an easy one. This one is super easy because it's just like strong acid and base. Oh. Ah. Okay. Part E. 25 milliliter of NaOH added. Okay. So if you would go back to this beaker, let's say uh let's say I put in five of these. Okay, and you'll note that this is going to be two more Na plus, two OH minus. Okay, as you can see, you are getting an excess of OH minus. Okay, on top of these guys who already have given some OH minus, but that's not something that you need to worry much about anyway because that's actually very little. So to find out exactly what this is, is really just the same way as what we did with um, strong acid and strong base titration. So we're going to find out exactly how much excess, okay, uh, was excess. So 0.3 moles per liter of NaOH times 0 0.0. 2, 5, okay, that will be 0 0.0075 mole of NaOH. So that's how much NaOH I added in total. What I do know is I used up 0 0.006 mole of NaOH, okay. That is from my last example. So I need to find out what's left. Okay, is that 0 0.0075 mole of NaOH minus 0 0.006 mole of NaOH? Okay, is equal to 0 0.00. One five mole. So that's how much was access, and that's how much is left. Now I find out what the concentration is. So zero point zero zero one five mole of NaOH over um, the original volume of the acid plus the new volume of added base. This will give me 0.33 mole molar of NaOH. Okay, so you put that into your pH calculation 
14 minus negative log of 0 0.033. That's 12.52. Okay. Now you may be thinking, like, sh should it be more than that? Should the beer be more OH to than that? Because uh, th these guys are generating OH2, right? But the amount of OH that they generate is really negligible. It's really not that much. Okay, The amount of o NaOH that you're getting from what you're putting in there directly worth way, way, way more. So this is uh, accepted value for pH if you added, I guess, 5 milliliter in excess of NaOH. Okay, giving you what's left over here as 0 0.0015 mole of NaOH because this amount was reacted, this amount was put in, okay, this is what's left. You divide that by the total number of volume and you should, of course, get your brand new molarity that you put into your pH equation. So a 25 milliliter is 12.52. One more plot, so 25 milliliter, and the pH is 12.52, so 12.52, right there, oh. Right there, okay. Hey, let's, let's put this together. Now, uh, you get to note, of course, that this was the equivalent point. Okay, so you're not going to do something like this. Because that's not a pH curve. Okay, pH curve really doesn't work like that. If we looked at how um, the strong acid and strong paste curve, it looks like an S curve. It, it, it gave you something that looked like this. And it should look like that too. If I were to give you, if I were to do more points, you'll probably understand why. But I think we did enough points. Let's use blue, and this is what you should have gotten. Okay. So if we were to maybe do one at nineteen. There would have been a dot here, okay? If we were to do one at 21, uh, there may be a dot there to kind of give you a better idea that it should have been like this. And then guess, guess what? You know, you can feel free to add 19 milliliters of NaOH, okay, to illustrate that. Or add in uh, 21 milliliter of NaOH to illustrate, you know, this. You know, be my guess, you have... The formula, you have exactly all the tools to do these weak acid versus strong base titration calculations. All right, uh, that's it in terms of titration. Okay, uh, tomorrow we'll look at pH of salts, and tomorrow will be the last uh, lesson that I'm going to give you. Now, there's, there's more, but I'm sorry, the fact that I uh, ran out of time, uh, I will give you one more because I think pH of salt is probably more important of the other few remaining thing that I kind of wanted to get to. But those things, you can easily read it on your own. They're, they're easy and you don't need me there. Anyway, have a good day.